Hey there, thanks so much for joining me for another tutorial. My name is Aranino and today I'm going to be showing you how to paint this fun abstract floral, but I'm going to do it on non-cotton paper. So a lot of you haven't invested in cotton paper and I thought I would take this opportunity to show you some of the properties of non-cotton paper and how you can use them to your advantage. So let's just jump in and get started. Before I start, I'll just run through my materials for you. Today I'm using my Van Gogh paints as I always do. I have a jar of water and a paper towel, and I've just taken out one brush for this painting, and I've grabbed my Princeton Snap in a size 12 round. And as I mentioned in the intro, I am not using a cotton paper today. I am using my Canson XL um, watercolor pad. It looks like this. And it's also uh, micro perfed on the edges so you can tear your uh, paintings out if you like to. So I just thought this would be a good opportunity to show that you can do some fun things and get some decent results on a non-cotton paper. And I prefer cotton paper, but there are some um, properties about non-cotton paper that you can benefit from when you're painting. And I quite often grab this if I'm just kind of doodling around or making plans or just want to do some kind of crazy abstract thing um, when I want to just unwind. So that is what we're going to do today. Okay, so to start, I'm just going to take my number 12 brush, get it nice and wet, and I'm going to mix up some um, quinacridone purple with carmine okay primarily carmine but just a bit of that purple thrown in and I'm just going to start making blob flowers on my page so it's all abstract so I'm just doing blobby shapes just like that. Okay, and that will dry a little lighter. One of the aspects of a non-cotton paper is that the paper, the paper, the pigment in the water sits on top longer than it does on a cotton paper. On a cotton paper, it tends to soak in. So you have a bit of play time here where you can just kind of move the paint around. You can pick some of it up. You can do that on a cotton paper as well. It's just you have more time on a cellulose paper. Okay, so we're just picking up just to get some highlights in these abstract flowers. And I'm gonna go in and do another one over here. Just blobs. And they're going to be flowers, so I'm doing them in a flower kind of shape, but I'm not fussing over the shapes of the petals, okay? And I'm just holding my brush loosely. I just find that helps when you're doing abstract so it's, you don't get these kind of contrived flower shapes. And I'm gonna rinse my brush off and I'm just gonna drag some water through here so these, kinda, these flowers kind of blend into each other. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to lift some of that pigment up. I don't want this to get sopping wet. You can also go in with just some plain water, not a lot, and just tap it on your petals and you'll get these neat blooms, which normally you don't want, but in something abstract like this, it can give you some kind of neat effects. Okay, kind of neat accidents, where things look like accidents, which I think are key when it comes to doing something abstract. So I'm gonna mix more of that pigment up here. And we'll try another one down here. Again, just blobby shapes. Okay, holding my brush loosely. I don't know why this one looks a lot darker pick some of that pigment up from over there. 
maybe drag these petals out a bit. So this is a little bigger and this can kiss that one and blend into that one. So this one is quite dark. So I am definitely going to be picking some of that pigment up. Because I want to make sure that we do maintain some contrast. Okay. And while it's still, this one was quite a bit darker, but that's okay. So while it's still wet, I'm also going to go in and get my uh, oxide black here. And uh, my oxide black is very granulating and tends to fade when it dries. So I like to mix in just a little bit of indigo just so it's good and dark. And I'm just going to tap some of that in the middle of these flowers and some of it's going to bleed and that's what I want. If it's not going to bleed, I'm actually going to force it to bleed. It's starting to bleed here and there, bleeding like crazy there, which is kind of neat. And you see how, fa how far those blooms have bled out. So what I'm going to do is let this layer dry a bit and then we'll go over it. So you get some hard edges on non-cotton paper and that can add to the abstract feel of your flowers. So don't poo-poo that, it's kind of a neat thing. The other benefit of non-cotton paper is because the pigment's sitting on top, you can always go in and soften the edges of some of your brush strokes or petals. Okay, and make them, excuse me. Okay, sorry for the interruption. Oh, I also wanted to point out that I was silly enough to start my dishwasher right before I started filming. So you may hear that making some weird noises in the background. So see how that edge softens. Now this is, the carmine is a pretty staining color, so it doesn't soften as much as some other colors would but it's still a little softer. I'm just gonna blend that out to almost nothing and maybe soften the edge on here a bit. Just kind of blur this in the middle, just so everything's not so harsh. And just kind of spread this out to nothing So there's a little tone in the background. It's not stark white, but it's not really dark. Okay, so just like that. So now I'm just gonna go in with a damp brush back into my purpley red pigment and start just putting some extra layers on here. Okay, no rhyme or reason, just putting it down. What I'm doing here is it's just creating some contrast. That flower is a lot more purple than the others. Maybe we'll fix that by putting some more red on here. Okay, now you don't get soft, smooth, ble as soft or smooth bleeds on non-cotton paper. Um, but you'd be surprised at how far it travels. So if you do, if you are painting wet and wet, like we are doing here, give it time to sit to see how far that's gonna travel because you might be surprised. Look how, ow, look how far that black has bled into there. Now that's kind of surprising for a non-cotton paper, but it does have that trait. So just keep that in mind that the paint is still gonna move and travel for a while after you put it on. The only way to stop that, if you have something that's gone about as far as you want it to go, is to take a heat tool to it, or to sop up some water with paper towel, or with your brush, because it won't travel where there's no water. 
okay so the stopping the water is key if you want to stop that bleed okay I hope that makes sense so now we've got even deeper pigment and I'm just going to start tapping right towards the center of our abstract flowers now hopefully these will dry nice and bright they will fade your colors aren't as vivid on a non-cotton paper um, and your paints play a role in that as well obviously so I kind of like what we're getting here I'm just going in with a clean damp brush and just touching some of this pigment that we just put down just so it's not so harsh I do want some hard edges like here I like that I like this I like what's going on down here but I just want to soften some of them and I have to be careful not to overwork it if you overwork it it starts to get a little flat the other thing is if it is getting a little flat just tap some water in there and take your brush clean it and tap it off on your paper towel and just go in and pick some of that pigment up see that nice highlight that's come back okay so just remember you can do that as well if you find it's getting too flat okay I'm just either sweeping in my brush or rolling it on there and just picking that pigment up but I kind of like that I'm going to take a little bit more of that purpley pink and put it over that black and I kind of like that hard edge too maybe I'll leave that then I'm going to go in to that blue black mixture again now remember the blue is just to make sure it was nice and rich okay but it's going to look black on my paper hopefully I will keep some of that granulating effect I won't get rid of it all but I do want it nice and rich in the middle so with that you can also go in and add some more petals if you want if you find that it's just looking too flowery maybe add a little something down here maybe up here I'm just playing around now this is quite wet and it's bleeding more than I want so I'm going to go in with my paper towel take up some of that water and I was going to go back in with pigment but I kind of like that effect so much so that I may try to recreate it over here a bit it's picking up the texture of my paper towel which I don't really want Eh, it's not working over here that's okay it's all good I'm just gonna put some more pigment back there actually what I will do is I'll just re-wet it and go back in there we go now if you do do if you do do if you do do this you have to keep in mind that non cotton paper isn't as strong and can't take as much scrubbing as a cotton paper okay so that's a cool effect but you don't want to be scrubbing at your paper too much and I think I may just leave it where it is right now I have a feeling if I go back in and do more that I may not be happy but look at me I'm gonna do it anyway 
just add a little bit here and a little bit here maybe some under there but I really like the way that black is bleeding in there so I'm going to clean off my brush take most of the water off and my brush is just a little damp and I'm just going to go and just give that last layer of paint a little bit of movement just like that so I really like those deep dark areas in fact I will just do another one right here and again just bleed that out just a little bit okay so now I'm going to go in and put some greenery in and I want to be careful here I don't want to get carried away I've just got a mishmash green over here it's got um, some sap green I think even a bit of azo yellow medium and I think a bit of the purple and some ultramarine deep it's just a mishmash really is so I'm just going to do a fun abstract leaf up here you can do them in strokes just like that so they've got some movement and do a stem here and another leaf just with quick strokes just like that maybe one here like a squiggly one you can touch your flower as well if you want to have it bleed in there and it'll do just a few not too heavy stems maybe show one going that way and then I also like to do some like just wisps of grass so I just do them really quickly right so they're not really overtaking and then I can go in with that green with a bit of black just to darken things up a bit and darken up some of these stems I'm just going with the tip of my brush and just a really light light hand okay so I don't want to have thick stems just put a couple in there you can also go in just for kicks and get a little bit of this black mixture and just put some black on here as well just to make it pop a little more um, actually what I want to do I think before we go is I'm just going to blend and blur the edge of this leaf just so it looks kind of abstract and mysterious maybe the edge of the outside stem and maybe this stem see how you just get these kind of really cool bleeds I might do that here too just touch it so I'm just going in with a wet brush and just touching the edge of that leaf just makes it more organic now, I don't want to do it everywhere because I don't want to make it seem so um, planned out 
you know. I think it's looking a little f flat here, so I'm just going to wet that area, clean off my brush, and pick up some pigment there. And then add some back just to the very center. But it is abstract, so I don't want to force everything too much. Okay, this is forming a hard edge there, which I kind of like. And I may just go back into that black and just tap a little more in there, just so it's really nice and rich right in the center. And I think I could also afford, I don't want to get carried away here. But I'm just going to take the very tip of my brush again and just beef up the color value of some of these grasses and leaves. So there you go, there is a quick abstract floral on very inexpensive non-cotton paper. It just shows you that you can get some really cool effects and work with the, um, with the properties of, of a non-cotton paper. Um, use them to your benefit. So I hope this has inspired you to do something like this on your own. And if you haven't subscribed and you want to see more beginner friendly tutorials, please make sure to subscribe. That's it for today, guys. Have a great day and I will see you next time.